Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a full end-to-end -end review of the Richter 1S, which is a budget-friendly electric scooter priced right around $499. Now this particular scooter's got some features that we typically don't see in this segment, so we're going to be jumping into the details of all of those features as well as the results of our end-to-end -end testing so that I can help you determine whether or not this scooter is worth the price tag. Now full disclosure, Rick did send me this scooter for review purposes and this is actually the second Richter scooter I've reviewed the first being the Richter S9 and I'll include a link in the description below if you want to go ahead and check that out but as always all thoughts opinions and conclusions are my own so without further delay let's jump into the details so first and foremost is going to be packaging and assembly and I'm happy to say that the Richter 1S arrived at my doorstep in pristine condition. There were no dings, dents, scratches or anything of that nature. Uh, so they did a really good job at packaging. Now in terms of assembly it doesn't actually get any easier than this. Uh, simply extend the stem, lock it into place and then attach the handlebars with the included hex screws. Shouldn't take you more than three to five minutes to get this thing fully assembled. Now taking a closer look at this scooter one of the first things that I notice is that it's very clean it's got a very streamlined design everything seems to go together very well so you can tell that Richter definitely put some thought into the design of this scooter everything from the integrated headlights to the stem uh, to the large and spacious foot deck as well as the rear kick plate and integrated lighting. This scooter is a single motor scooter and it is front wheel drive and that front motor is 350 watts and is capable of cranking out upwards of 756 peak watts. Now powering that motor is a 7.5 amp hour 36 volt lithium ion battery which should be good for about 270 watt hours of capacity and according to Richter that should take you to about 18.6 miles in theoretical range. Of course we absolutely put that to the test which which we'll look at in a moment. In terms of charge time, they do include a 1.5 amp charger. So given that the battery on board is 7.5 amp hours, you're looking at approximately five hours to fully charge the battery from 0% to 100%. Now, if you are curious what the top speed on this scooter is, Richter does claim approximately 15 and a half miles an hour, which is fairly typical in this budget segment. Uh, so the scooter like this is gonna be perfect for doing those grocery store runs, riding around the neighborhood, something maybe you take on campus, uh, definitely not going to be a speed demon, but for some of those, you know, shorter commutes could be the perfect scooter. But of course, we'll go into the results of our end-to-end -end testing. In addition to this being a budget-friendly scooter, it's also ultra portable. And when I weighed it on my scale, it actually weighs in at 35.9 pounds, which puts it in that ultra portable category. So if you're needing something that's easy to carry, easy to store, easy to take up multiple flights of stairs, uh, the Richter 1S is absolutely perfect for that. And even though this is a sub 36 pound scooter, it does support riders up to 264 pounds or approximately 120 kilograms. And it also dons an IP65 dust and water resistance rating. So you should be able to use it in some light range conditions. This scooter does have 10 inch tube pneumatic tires which definitely help with absorbing some of the impact when you go over you know small lumps and bumps in the road. And in terms of brakes you do have front electronic or regenerative braking and then you've also got a drum brake in the rear. Now at the beginning of this video I did say that this scooter has some features that we typically don't see in the budget scooter segment. And one of those features is going to be NFC locks. So you can actually use one of the included NFC cards and you can use that to lock and unlock the scooter which provides an additional level of security. So when you have the scooter locked if someone tries to roll the scooter away that front motor is going to provide a significant amount of resistance which is going to make it very difficult to roll this scooter around. So really if somebody's looking to jack your scooter their only option is to pick it up and run away with it. So you're not going to have to worry about somebody scooting away on your scooter. The next feature I want to call out is going to be the headlight and it is a light sensing headlight. And most scooters have headlights that you just turn on and off which you can absolutely do on this scooter but it does have a light sensor so when things start getting a little dark outside that headlight automatically turns on which means you don't have to take your hand off the handlebar to hit the button at the center of the screen to turn on the headlights 
those will turn on for you automatically. The next standout feature on this scooter is gonna be its linear tail light. And typically on electric scooters in this category, you see small like circle or oval shaped tail lights, which are bright enough, uh, but the Richter 1S actually has a linear tail light that is the width of the entire deck, which is super bright and super visible at night. So I thought that was a really nice touch. And lastly, in terms of standout features on this scooter, you have app connectivity. Now, not all budget electric scooters come with a companion app. And the nice thing about having an app is that you know, companies like Richter can push out firmware updates to improve the riding experience over time. It also gives you the ability to go in there and track, you know, mileage on your scooter, enable or disable kick to start, enable or disable cruise control. You can go in there, you can set the regenerative braking strength, which is a feature we typically see on more expensive scooters. And then you can go in there and do a host of other things. So really nice to have a companion app with the Richter 1S. So now that we've gone over all the features and specs of this scooter, let's jump straight in to end-to-end -end testing. So first and foremost is gonna be speed and acceleration. Now, if you've watched my content for a while, you'll know that I use the Draggy Performance Monitor uh, to measure speed and acceleration across all the different scooters and e-bikes that I review because it gives very accurate data. Now, with the Richter 1S, they do claim it'll get upwards of 15 and a half miles per hour. And in our testing, we actually got 16 miles an hour and it was able to reach that top speed in an average of approximately 12.96 seconds. So so, you know, you're not going to be winning any major races with this scooter, but it does have a very smooth acceleration profile and gets you up to speed in a respectable amount of time, especially for a budget scooter. Now, this scooter does have two primary driving modes. It's got drive as well as a sport mode. There's also a pedestrian mode that you can use if you're going to be walking the scooter around. Uh, but I spent most of my time in that drive mode. And to be honest with you, 16 miles an hour is perfect for cruising around the neighborhood. Next on the list is gonna be range. Now, Richter does claim that this scooter will get upwards of 18.6 miles in theoretical range. In the real world, what you actually get in range may be very different from what the manufacturer claims. Now, uh, for my test, I did weigh in around 203, 204 pounds with gear, and I was able to get 14.64 miles in real world range, cruising around in sport mode at basically top speed most of the time, which to be honest with you, given you know my weight, the size of the scooter, the motor power is a very respectable figure. So if you weigh less than me, you'll absolutely be able to crank out more range. If you weigh more than me, you're gonna get less range. Now, one thing to call out about this scooter as well as pretty much every scooter out there is once you get to about 15, 20% battery remaining, you are gonna see some significant reductions in acceleration as well as top speed. So as you get close Closer and closer to 0% remaining, you will see your top speed drop from you know 15 to 13 to 11 to 9 all the way down to zero when your battery is completely depleted. Next up is gonna be hill climbability. Now, one important thing to remember about this scooter is that it is a single motor scooter with 350 nominal watts of power. So this thing isn't designed for, you know, San Francisco style hills or, you know, riding on hills at the base of the Rocky Mountains or anything like that. It's really designed to ride around flat ground as well as light hills. Now for my hill climb tests, I did take it, uh, you know, to to a you know hilly area community uh, with some hills that get upwards of six to seven percent grade, and this scooter did a fabulous job on those. Uh, on the steepest section where it's about seven percent grade, it did slow down to about eleven miles an hour, but it was able to power through. And then of course on the downside of the mountain with the regenerative brake. Uh, enabled, uh, you know, you can feel that kick in very smooth, uh, no ghost braking or anything like that. Overall, a very good experience. So if you live in a place with some light hills, you should be good to go. But like I said before, if you live in a place with super steep hills, um, definitely not the scooter for that purpose. As I mentioned earlier, this is a very portable scooter weighing in at just 35.9 pounds. And as you can see here, it fits in my Mazda CX-5 compact SUV with plenty of room to spare. Now, one of the things that I really like about this scooter is gonna be the latching mechanism. It's actually probably gonna be the most robust latching mechanism I've ever seen on a budget scooter, as well as some more expensive commuter scooters. So kudos to Richter for equipping this with a solid latching mechanism. Uh, you know, in order to fold this 
scooter, you simply lift the red tab, pull out the lever, fold the scooter down, and then latch it into the rear kick plate. And the little uh, loop or hooking mechanism there actually sits flush with the rear kick plate. So, you know, when you want to fold it up, you just pull it out, latch it into place, you're good to go. You can pick up the scooter by the stem, throw it in the trunk of your car, you know, take it inside, whatever you need to do. When it comes to stopping power, this scooter does have the front electronic and regenerative braking. It's also got a rear drum. Now, one thing to call out about drum brakes is that they don't have the stopping power or the bite of disc brakes. So just keep in mind with drums, you are gonna need a little extra distance to slow down relative to disc brakes. But the good news is, is it's not just the drum that you have, you also got some electronic braking and you can actually go in and adjust the strength in the app. Overall, I found the braking to be satisfactory on this scooter. It's nothing to write home about. It does get you to a stop. Um, but with this scooter being the size and weight and the fact that it's got drum brakes, uh, I do recommend planning out your stops because it is gonna take a little bit longer, you know, than a more expensive commuter scooter to come to a stop. When it comes to ride comfort and stability, I will say that this is a very comfortable scooter to ride around on. Now it doesn't have a suspension, but what it does have is those 10 inch tubed pneumatic tires, which do a very good job of absorbing some of the smaller impacts in the road. Uh, definitely wouldn't recommend riding on some, you know, really rutted out dirt roads or anything like that or gravel. Uh, but if you've got, you know, sidewalks and well-paved roads to ride around on, uh, it does a very good job. Another thing to mention about ride comfort is the deck has got plenty of space. It's actually really long uh, and I wear a size 10 shoe, so I had no problems with foot placement with one foot in front of the other as it should be, so you shouldn't have any issues at all with your stance on this scooter. Another thing I wanna mention is that the handling on this scooter is excellent. You know, I was able to take turns at speed with no issues at all whatsoever. And I never recommend taking a hand off of a scooter. You always wanna make sure you have, you know, two hands on the scooter at all times. But there were a couple times like I had an itch on my face, I took my hand off and the scooter did it very well. With a lot of scooters out there, you take your hand off while you're riding, you're probably gonna eat it, and that's never fun. So always be sure to wear a helmet. Uh, but with me, you know, when I had to take a hand off, it was very stable. All right, so now that we've gone over all the features as well as the results of my end-to-end -end testing, what are the things that I love about this scooter? Number one on my list is gonna be the NFC lock. I think it's a really nice security feature to have. You just go over, tap on to turn on, tap on to turn off, and you're good to go. So if you're gonna be locking this up, if you're gonna be taking it to school, riding it on campus, uh, and you don't want people messing around with your scooter, you just use the NFC lock, and it'll lock that front wheel, which will prevent people from rolling it away. Number two on my list has gotta be the lighting on this scooter. It does have a very bright headlight, especially for being a budget scooter, uh, and it's also got a very bright, very visible tail light that goes the entire width of the rear deck. Uh, and so in terms of being seen at night, you shouldn't have any issues with that. Um, with most scooters and with this scooter as well, I do recommend looking into getting a, you know, a handlebar mounted light to provide some additional visibility to the sides. But in terms of forward visibility, it's solid on this scooter. Number three on my list is gonna be app connectivity. And as I mentioned before, not all budget scooters have a companion app. So it's really nice to see that with the Richter 1S. And finally, number four on the list of things that I love about this scooter has gotta be the latching mechanism on the stem. It's a lot more robust than I've seen on any other budget electric scooter, as well as higher end commuter scooters. So they did a very good job at thinking that out because it's probably the single most important component of any electric scooter. So what are the things that I think can use some improvement? Well, number one on my list is gonna be the charging port. Now they do hide the charging port behind the kickstand, which is great for protecting that charging port, but there is a little rubber flap that covers that little port. Uh, and so when you're using your foot, you know, to uh, kick the kickstand down, let's say you forgot to, you know, plug that little rubber piece back in, there is a possibility that you might, you know, kick and tear off that little flap, which is exactly what happened in my case. So in order to avoid that, uh, you know, I recommend making sure that uh, that little rubber piece is plugged all the way in before each ride. And just be careful when you're using your foot to kick that kickstand so you don't uh, hit that little rubber piece. And number two on my list of things that I think could use some improvement are gonna be the brakes. Now, most budget electric scooters pretty much have satisfactory braking power, and that's exactly the case with the Richter 1S. 
Me, personally, I love to see disc brakes on scooters because they do have more stopping power. They do have more bite. Uh, the brakes on this scooter are sufficient, but it would be nice to see in future iterations maybe using, you know, a disc brake for some additional stopping power. So, bringing it all together, what do I think about this scooter? Who do I think it's right for? Uh, I think Richter did a really good job, especially at this price point, of delivering a really good-looking, sleek electric scooter with some upmarket features that we typically don't see in this segment. Uh, you know, it's got respectable speed going, you know, half a mile an hour faster than they claim. Uh, we were able to get pretty close to the range estimates, especially with me weighing in at over 200 pounds. Uh, and overall, it's a very portable scooter, very easy to carry around with you. It's not cumbersome at all as some of the larger commuter scooters. So if you're looking for a scooter to ride around the neighborhood, do a quick run to the grocery store, go to the gas station around the corner, or maybe take this to campus or go on shorter commutes, it's the perfect scooter for that purpose. Now, if you're interested in purchasing the Richter 1S, I will include you know any links in the description below as well as any coupons that might be available. And let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns. Happy to address all of those. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.